you see, regret doesn't help anything. That's why I'm apologizing for being misunderstood. It's probably the way I said it, but uh, again, owing to the fact that people who watch me on live TV actually have been calling me and telling me, but you said everything um, uh, that is going on. Nikofiti sana, nikofiti sana, karibu, karibu ni sana, nashukuru. Maisha na kwenye kaze kama wana muziki kwa pakele? Maisha iko sawa, nashukuru mungu, nimekuwa tu sawa, nimekuwa fiti, kazi tu na chapa. Jimmy Gate, recently, we saw you trending on social media. Allegedly, ilikuwa mbeza na kara kwa mba, you said, Women that are in Gulf, the reason why they undergo all the mistreatment is because they sleep around with people's <laughs> husbands. So, is it true? Is it true? Um, and how do you know they do that? If that is true? Um, okay, so the reason you want to trend last week, I think over the weekend, did you have a statement about it quoted on social media by K24 social media? Because I said that exactly what you said. Um, women in Gulf are getting mistreated because they're sleeping around with people's husbands. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, that was a misinformation. So I would just speak to one of the things I said as the reason why they're getting mistreated. And they generalized and said that he, Jimmy Gita Mesema, that's the reason why. To, to be honest, that was a misinformation. So I would I give other reasons. And kuse mokweli, hizo vitu zina hapa, nata hapa. You know, uh, ladies, you know, sometimes can get themselves sleeping with other people's husbands. I mean, that's not a new thing. Mm -hmm. And it can happen anywhere and everywhere. However, si kusema that that's the only reason. I also give other reasons. Like, for instance, sometimes they find themselves in bad homes. Kusiana mepele kwa kazi Saudi ama Qatar ama Dubai. And then ama jipara kwa nyumbambaya. So whether or not she has done something good or bad, and I tell her too, just because I'm in Gia Kwanyu Bambaya. And I said, that's where the agency that took you there comes into play. If you are taken by a good agency, they are supposed to sort you out and get you out of that house immediately and get you to another house. However, if you are taken by a bad agency that is not following the government protocols, that doesn't care about you, then they leave you uteseke uko. So I give that as another major reason why our ladies are getting mistreated. Uh, and the reason why men are not getting mistreated in most cases is because they don't live with, uh, with Arabs. They live in hostels or in, uh, you know, away from the Arabs. But the ladies, most of them, because their house helps, and I'm not saying all of them are, and I need to be gotten right, not all ladies who work in the Gulf are, are house helps, but we have a huge number of them that are house helps. Mm -hmm. And because they are working in people's homes, Sometimes they can find themselves in the hands of the wrong, um, you know, the wrong Arabs, and uh, and as, as a result, on a Tesla. Yesterday night there was a very extensive uh, interview at Citizen with JKL, mm. and the Minister of Labour confirmed that there are 97,000 uh, uh, Kenyans working in Saudi alone. 97,000 Kenyans. He also said. 200 of them are in deportation. Yeah, mm -hmm. Those are the ones that are about to be evacuated from Saudi. He also talked about uh, the fact that some of the ladies, they elope from their bosses. And in fact, one of the ladies who was being interviewed, she confirmed what I actually had said. That some of the ladies elope from their bosses and they go looking for greener pastures. Yeah, and that is one of the reasons why they probably sometimes don't have the papers or they are bleaching the contract. If something wrong happens to them, since they had already you know, bleached the contract, the agency that took you there cannot be able to assist them because they've already bleached the contract. She also talked about, which I also did, that um, some of the ladies are homesick. So sometimes they can also create some stories and sometimes they can also elope just looking for a way to get out. And those are her words, and she was there in Saudi. She also talked about mistreatment. Some of the ladies are mistreated from, uh, you know, by the Arabs, 
and that's why they elope. So there are so many other different reasons which I actually mentioned in my interview at K24. But what K24 social media did is they took that one reason that Jimmy Gates said, uh, it's because they are sleeping with people's husbands, that's why they are getting mistreated. And sometimes it's not their wish to sleep with them. Sometimes they are seduced by the Arabs. Sometimes they are forced by the Arabs. Sometimes it is them who give in. However, if your wife catches you with another woman, whatever reason led to that is not important to them. They will react based on, you're sleeping with my husband. And so I, I just need to make it uh, clear that I did not mean that that's the only reason. It's one of the reasons. And I want to apologize for being misquoted. I want to apologize if it came out you know, the way it wasn't supposed to come out. Uh, and I'm glad that I have this, these platforms to be able to clarify uh, uh, that that is not the only reason. It's one of the reasons. Now that we saw very many people, especially women, going against what you say, mm. do you regret family? Well, um, you see, regret doesn't help anything. That's why I'm apologizing for being misunderstood. It's probably the way I said it, but uh, again, owing to the fact that people who watch me on live TV actually have been calling me and telling me, but you said everything um, uh, that is going on. But on social media, because social media is a different audience from the live audience that are watching TV, people that were not watching TV that day only got that Jimmy Gates said that the reason our women are getting mistreated in uh, Middle East countries is because they are sleeping with people's bosses. Because that is what they were given. That's the content they were given. So that is the content they were reacting to. They were not given all the content that I said, all the other reasons I gave. And so based on that, they are justified to behave or to react the way they did. And so I don't blame them. And um, it's unfortunate that I was mis misquoted um, by, you know, K24, and I would appeal to the media to sometimes don't just speak one thing just because you want to trade at the expense of someone else, honestly. Because I don't think it's fair that, you know, K24 just took one, one part of what I said and fed it to a different audience without giving them the whole information of what I said. I think that's unfair. But anyway, it has happened. We move on. And um, yeah, I, I, uh, I have no hard feelings. For anybody that insulted me, it's okay. I, I mean, that's that's part of being a public uh, servant, you know. Uh, yes, I know you've not been seeing me a lot on social media or on mainstream media, mm -hmm. because my focus has been very much on assisting people get jobs. We have so many people that are working in Middle East, courtesy of you know the the, the path that I've been able to create. So many Kenyans are feeding their families, so many Kenyans are taking their kids to school, they are earning a livelihood in hundreds of them. And um, like I said in another interview, my focus is in the next uh, two years to create around 10,000 jobs for Kenyans out there. Because there are no jobs here. You know, jobs are going down. We don't have jobs here, so it's an alternative. But that aside, it doesn't mean that I have quit music. I'm still recording more music, and when it's the right time, I'll release more music. So uh, I don't want people to feel like I quit music. I'm just focusing more on creating impact and you know, creating success stories. And I'm very passionate about what I'm doing at the moment. The reason I decided to focus also on helping guys get jobs is because, number one, COVID hit. So many people lost jobs. So many people are in depression. And I asked myself, what can I do to sort of help. I may not help everyone, and I'm not called to help everyone because I don't even have the capacity to help everyone. But if I can do for 10,000 people and assist them get jobs, you know, that for me is significant. And, and so that pushed me to want to create that path that is safe, that people can trust, that even when you go, you know, we follow up with you. We follow up with our people who are working in Middle East and anywhere else we've sent them. We follow up with them to make sure they are fine. We make sure we follow through all the uh, protocols that the government has set up. We don't bypass any of those. We make sure they are legally working out there. We should care them in every way. When they get there, we want to make sure they are fine. We keep communicating with them to make sure they are fine. In case they have any challenge, we quickly address that issue and help them get out of that issue 
almost immediately. And we are very, very committed to that. It's not just sending people, it's sending people to go and work in safe environments and you know, have backup, our backup. You know, some of them talk to me directly sometimes. You know, of course we have a team, but some of them talk to me directly and I communicate with them and I make sure that they are fine. 